So we're gonna go ahead and open up the boxing for the Acuity Short Shifter. I wanna give a big shout out to Pawin for helping me with the instructions for it and all the torque specs and all the information I had about the Acuity Short Shifter. So thank you for that. I'm gonna drop his YouTube down in the description so you guys can check it out too if you want. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into the unboxing of it. I got this during the Black Friday special that they had going on for Acuity. So I'm gonna look up the price of what I paid for it right now. We're gonna compare it to how much Hybrid Racing's was on sale for that my, my other buddy got. So, but to start, we got a swag bag here. It's pretty cool, some stickers, some air fresheners, and some tags, five horsepower piece. I'm gonna go ahead and dump out these packing peanuts because I don't want them to spill all over, the, all over the garage. So right now when I get those dumped out, we're gonna go ahead and open up the Acuity Short Shifter. So this is it. We got the Acuity Short Shifter for the 10th gen, or as I like to say, my Type R. Let's see what we have. We have more packing peanuts. Let me throw these out too real quick. So these are the internals of the box, guys. What I like is over here, you have an installation guide, the, the website that you can search up, and then you have the internals of the box. So we have our four mounting screws right here our o-ring so we also have our cable support bolt and sleeve here inside so this is our shifter lever lever assembly for the acuity short shifter and then the most important part the shifter body so this is a really sick and then of course a sticker all right cooper so what brand did you get i went with hybrid racing obviously shout out to them they helped me out uh no just voice me over okay. <laughs> um they helped me out amazing though very uh very detailed instructions they gave me on Instagram. Shout out to whoever was helping me. Very cool guy invited me down to the shop. I'm probably gonna go there next year, bring Kevin with me. And that is its Type R guys. You guys seen it in past videos. So this one's getting the Acuity Short Shifter and this one's getting the Hybrid Racing Short Shifter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the installation procedures for them. And then we're gonna compare the actual drivability of them from new and then once they actually break in. Because Acuity told me that it would have a break in procedure before you actually got the full normal shifting of it. So I got my little swag bag, my awesome sauce air freshener. I got a whole pack of them actually. Dang, that's a lot of them. <laughs> Shout out to Hybrid Racing. Oh, they're sick. I also got some more stickers, five horsepower each. Adjustable short shifter. More packaging paper. Hey, at least you're, uh... it's not the pellets. <laughs> so this is going to be my lever assembly, which as you can tell, it's got the hybrid racing logo on it. You got the hybrid racing logo right there. Hybrid racing logo on the back. And that is the shift lever. I personally went with the black one over the red one because it was a hundred dollars cheaper on black Friday. <laughs> Make sure you don't throw something away by accident. Yeah. What do we got? Another sticker guys. Probably another one. In hybrid like racing. Nope. Installation guide. You got a little tag where you can look up the installation procedures and follow them. And the hardware. This is the actual short shifter itself. It's a very good quality. Oh, that looks awesome. So that's the actual base, guys, for the short shifter for hybrid racing. Wow, that looks pretty sick. Not even yeah, lie. this is nice. And we're going to try to be as biased as we can yes. as far as which shifter we like better and which installation style we like better. I'm a fan of both brands. I have both on my car, so. So quick comparison between the two guys. We have the Acuity short shifter here, and then we have the hybrid racing short shifter here. What I like a lot about the Acuity is that it lists all its torque specs on the side of the base. So that I always found that really cool. You have the serial number right here in the branding. As far as the hybrid racings, it looks really sick too. You have the model number here, hybrid racing on the side, a bunch of hybrid hybrid racing. This looks like an, an adjustment you can put on it. It says one or two. One of the ones reduced the throw by 5% and one of them reduced it by 25%. I'm not 100% sure which one it is. I'm gonna have to look that up. So as far as both bases go, both really firm, really good quality. Yeah, so once we get into the actual installs and we actually get all our dashes disassembled and everything, we're going to look up more about the adjustment procedures for each one and we're going to adjust them to what they specify and what they recommend to try to get as good of an adjustment as possible for you guys. My personal opinion, guys, as far as which one looks better, I honestly really like how the purple stands out with the black frame. 
and then the silver matches good with the black so a cutie base looks good for me but both are really really good quality what about you cooper which one you like better i personally like the cutie one more just for the color wise but it comes down to performance at the end all wrapped up and i'll share it with everyone at the shop so this one's the one that's going to be getting the acuity short shifter the black one or my buddy cooper's is going to be getting the hybrid racing short shifter what we're going to start with is we have to remove these two um two armrests right here so all you want to do is basically just squeeze and lift two pieces there you go so next what, we're gonna, what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove these two trays you can pull up or on this one it has a tab that you can just push in and lift it right out to get these out of the way. There's this little tab right here that you can lift up this rubber piece right here for your tray. And there's two bolts. Those bolts are eight millimeters. There you go, one, two. So once we took out those two bolts right here, we're gonna start removing these plastic pieces, which should, you should be able to just put your pry tool set in there. That didn't happen until 2019. So that's one. So after we got both of these removed, what we're going to start doing is we're going to remove our shift knob. So we're going to drop our shift boot. This collar right here is going to be a 14 millimeter. We're going to hold our shift knob, use our 14 millimeter wrench should be able to break this shift knob loose, remove our shift knob, and then remove our collar. Look, Cooper, this is how easily it should slide off. <laughs> oh, we're about to change it. Do not lose this collar. You're gonna have a really rough day trying to find this if you end up losing it. Put this somewhere safe. I have two of them. Okay, well, no one asked you. <laughs> so after removing our shift knob and our collar, what we're gonna start doing is removing these two screws right here and once we remove those two screws we can pop this plastic trim piece up hey cooper these screws came out a lot easier than on yours <laughs> so once we pop this back up guys it's held on by these these six clips right here start disconnecting your your connector that runs to this so in total it should be three one two and three so once you disconnect them, go ahead and put this back and we're gonna start working with this now. So to begin, we're gonna remove this screw right here and then we're gonna remove both of the screws on the side of your AC head unit because this AC head unit is gonna pop out too. I've said it before guys, but just as a reminder, if you guys don't have a gun with the Phillips, just use a screwdriver. At the end of the day, you have the same results. I just have the accessibility to a gun, so I use a gun. So this one's the one holding on the center of this uh, plastic piece. So I'm gonna store this and we'll be equal. Now we're gonna work with the right side screw. So we got the two bolts out from the AC head unit. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop out the AC head unit. It's just held in by some clips. So all you gotta do is just push it forward with your hand, just like that. And then we're gonna disconnect these two connectors that are on the back of the AC head unit. So these two right here, they're gonna be disconnected and we can go ahead and store this. Remove these two Phillips right here. There's two. Once you get those two removed, you can go ahead and slide your car in, into a gear. So I usually slide it into fourth gear. That way it gives me more clearance when I go to lift this. Like I have the wireless charger installed into my car, guys. What I'm gonna do, this is the harness right here that runs to it. So once you take out these two screws holding in your wireless charger, twist and it should pop right up well if you don't have a wireless charger then it, the installation is a whole lot easier <laughs> your wireless charger should be loose and then just disconnect it so now that we got the wireless charger out guys this should just slide right out oh so these two connectors right here for the lighting on the side of the trim piece so not your type r might not have that 
if it doesn't, you should just be able to remove this. So pull this off. And then you can go ahead and put this in the back. So get a 90 degree pick. And if you take off this rubber pad right here, you'll be able to see a little, a little gap right here. So if you stick your pick in there and pull forward, this panel should come right up. What I did is I stuck it on this other side right here and I did the same exact thing. I pulled forward and it popped right out, just like that. So after that, disconnect your cigarette lighter and disconnect your USB connector that goes right here. So we're gonna work now with these clips that are on the side of the uh, center. <laughs> And everything's called trim piece. Yes, it is. In the first person's eyes, it is. Center trim piece. The center trim piece right here. So, is he called? I don't do. I don't know the name of it. Everything's called trim piece. I'm not lying. So if you look at this clip, guys, you got to compress the sides right here to be able to pull it out. So what I'm doing, I'm getting my 90 degree pick, and I'm pushing. I'm pushing down on the clip and prying out, and it should be able to release it. So we're gonna be taking out this one. We already did, we took out this one, and now we have one over here that we have to take out before everything is loose and we can remove this center console. This is by far the hardest part of this install, so far. <laughs> so I pushed my driver's side seat all the way forward. So what we're gonna do now is take off this back portion. That's one, and then do this passenger side one too like that so once you pop these two clips out all you got to do is pull straight back and this cover piece is out there's a sensor back here that we have to disconnect and disconnect it and then one of these clips stack that connects the harness to the actual plastic center console piece we got that clip removed Scratch it up a bit, but it'll be fine. So on the bottom, there is a sensor that you have to disconnect also. So before you can fully remove it. But once you got that removed, you should be able to just pull this right out. Just like that. So the connector that we removed, removed at the end, guys, is the USB connector that goes in, inside the center console. So once you lift it up, make sure you disconnect this before just yanking out the, the center console on the car. But then it should be able to come right out. This is how it looks like. So hopefully that looks a little bit better because of the sun that was blaring down on us. Hi. So now what we're going to start doing is working with our shifter assembly. We're going to go ahead and remove the old one so we can go ahead and install the Acuity one on here to begin guys the removal of the old shifter we're going to remove these two eight millimeter bolts or screws however, whichever one you want to use off of the car what i'm going to do is so i don't get these two screws confused i'm actually going to thread them back in here slightly that way i won't miss misplace which screws the actually these actually were like me yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i don't want to expose you but man look at those Wonder welds. quality Honda ultimate quality right there. Look look at these two welds right here. Dude, I think we could probably weld better. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and start by removing this clip right here so we can pull off the shift linkage. Because we should be able to just... So the way I remove this, guys, is I push the front of it forward and then the back slid right off. So that should separate this linkage right here. Do not lose this, put this somewhere safe. So now what we're gonna do guys is after we got this linkage disconnected, we're gonna start removing this bottom portion of the shift lever. So if you pry back and just pull down, should come right off. There you go. So now your shift lever is free from the linkage because there's two linkages on the cars. This one on the left side, and then this one was the right side that we just disconnected. As far as this driver's side linkage goes, guys, if you look right here, there is a tab that needs to be pushed forward. When you're gonna pull it off, you're gonna you gotta you gotta stick something thin in there. I stuck my little pick in there and pushed the tab forward. After that, I was able to spin this a little bit to be able to slide it right off of this mount right here off of this old linkage. So after we got this removed, we're gonna go ahead and start removing the the right side one. So for the right side, guys, 
this is where the tab is located what we're gonna do is we're gonna push straight back to be able to push that tab in and while we're doing that we twist the linkage should come right out dude what you basically had to do get your pick in there at kind of an angle so the tab guys is right here on the back side you basically push towards the firewall and push this tab forward and once you do that at the same time spin this around half a turn and you should be able to lift this right out of the mount this is a 10, 10 millimeter bolt and we're going to remove all four from the corners We got the four mounting bolts up. We have the shifter loose. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove those clips for the harnesses that, store, that are still attached to the shifter. For example, this one right here. So we're gonna start with this bottom one right here. That's three. And then our last one down here in the corner. There we go, that's four. Man, this is some cheap plastic, dude. Yeah, you can definitely tell the quality between the aftermarket shifters and the stock shifter, man. This is, wow, feel that, Cooper. God. That is a huge difference. What do you think? Um, <laughs> definitely can tell which one's better quality. Hybrid racing too though, because hybrid racing has really good construction on theirs mm -hmm. too. So, wow. It, um, this old shifter amazes me, dude. What I like more about the hybrid racing one is their spring is built into the short shifter. It's not exposed like the Acuity and the OEM one. <laughs> I didn't realize it was gonna be plastic like that. I didn't think so either. That's what that's what's inside of your car right now. Yeah, a not plastic, for long, not for long. Shifter. We're gonna go ahead and start mounting up our Acuity shifter. So what we're gonna do is first we're gonna maneuver it and make sure that this the shift linkage under the under the short shifter so lift it up like that guys so kind of get it in the position you want it as far as the right linkage goes inside of our packaging from acuity we have these four allens right here these four allen screws and these are going to be our mounting screws for the base start threading your allens in I like threading everything down by hand just to make sure I'm not cross threading any of the bolts. This is number three. So get the thread started for all four of these bolts. And I don't know if the GoPro is gonna focus in there. If you look right here, seven Newton meters is the torque for these four Allens. That's something I like about the security shifter that it has all the torque specs on the actual part. So seven Newton meters is what we're gonna torque down these four bolts to. I have seven Newton meters set to on the torque wrench. We have our four Allens torqued down to seven new meters. And then just to verify, they're all set. There we go. So now that we got our mounting bolts set and torqued, what we're gonna start doing is installing the shifter cable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna twist it. And if you look over here, guys, this is what's replacing the clip that's gonna hold our shifter cable with the new Acuity shifter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna twist the Acuity shifter so we can see that clip. And then we're gonna push this into the mounting spot. There we go. We twisted it enough. And if you look right here, this right here is the clip that we pushed up to remove it. And once you spin it, so now we got it holding. Now you can't twist it to remove it. Before installing this linkage right here, if you read right here, it says gate adjustment screw. So this is the adjustment screw for the gate spacing, and that's gonna be torqued down to eight Newton meters. So once you have your gate spacing at the adjustment that you want, so what we're gonna do now is put our 19 millimeter socket on it and putting some pressure on the front of it, torquing it to eight Newton meters. So I'll reinstall this clip right here that we took off in the beginning. You're gonna start want to start with the end and get it in that groove and then you can just push that clip right over it so that shift linkage isn't going anywhere now what we're gonna do guys we're gonna loosen this bolt right here so we're gonna tighten it up just to one just to hold it for now so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the linkage so same concept as far as the left side goes what we're gonna want to do is twist the linkage
in my darkest times when I was tired and frustrated with cuts all over my hands and band-aids Cooper was there to save the day. With also band-aids on my hand, I got it to slip in. We greased it up. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't cut yourself on the sharp metal. But the way it's gonna work, because I kind of forgot the orientation, this piece right here, that flat portion is gonna kind of be straight up flat. And then in that orientation, it should be able to slide in and then you're gonna twist it clockwise. Wait, counterclockwise? Clockwise. We're gonna we're gonna twist it clockwise. Well, our problem is we'd get it in, but it wouldn't twist clockwise. So I had to get it in, lube up both sides, and then it would twist and it snapped into place. It should just be able to twist really easily and lock into place. We had a little bit of issues. We finally got it, Cooper. Yes, sir. So we're gonna go ahead and reconnect this. So we're gonna have to open up these clips just like how we did on the removal. There you go. So we have the linkage connected. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower that to the setting that we want. I don't want it on the shortest setting possible. I don't want it in the highest setting possible. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put at three, how it came, just like that. We're gonna go ahead and torque this down to eight newton meters. And that spec is found on this passenger side right here. Gear adjustment screw, eight newton meters. We're torquing down everything to spec for the best possible comparison. For now, three definitely sounds safe. What do you Solid think, number, solid number. I'm sorry I haven't mentioned this guys throughout the video, but the Allen that we're actually using for all these bolts is a five millimeter Allen. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna thread this in by hand. This is a shift lever. So we're gonna leave it loose for now, just so we can get the angle that we want. It has right hand range and left hand range. We want to stay within this range, guys, that the QD list out for us. So I guess like I'm a left-handed driver. This is right in the center. Depending whether you want to face more towards the front of the car or more towards the back of the car is your choice. I'm probably going to leave it right at zero. So the torque for this bolt right here, guys, is going to be nine newton meters. So I actually went plus one. So it's not right on zero, it's it's one, because I sit, I sit a little bit closer up, so I just felt that would be better for me. At the end of the day, guys, it's however you guys feel it's gonna be your adjustment to how you drive, but we're torquing this down to nine newton meters, so. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the height of the actual shifter. This Allen's the same size as all the other bolts and screws, it's gonna be a five millimeter. We can go ahead and lift this up, and if you see right here, there's writing on the side of it, one, two, three, four, five depending on how high you actually want the shift knob to ride. So I'm doing a test fit first. So I got it right now at the one position. Jesus. Dude, those are short. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, and yes, guys, while we're doing all this, clutch is in. <laughs> the hybrid's going to be a lot more feeling like stock. Man, that feels... But you know what? I kind of like the shifter like that. Mm -hmm. I kind of like it at the lowest setting. Okay. So I have decided, guys, one felt a little bit too short, two felt a little bit too long for me, my personal taste. So we're torquing it down to nine newton meters at one and a half for the height of the shifter. So now what we're going to be doing guys is installing the cable support bolt and sleeve. There's already a hole labeled out for it. This is the only bolt guys that has a different size Allen than the other ones. All the other Allens are five millimeters. This one's actually a four millimeter. So we're going to go ahead and torque it down to seven newton meters. We're going to grab this O-ring that came with the kit and we are going to put it under the shift linkage and wrap it around it. The inner part of the O-ring is gonna go on the inside. You're gonna wrap it around the shift linkage to the outside. Hopefully not. We'll see. Now that we know what we're doing, right? Nope. No free promotion. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. It's a nice sweatshirt. How much was that? Um, $20 on Black Friday. What I like about the hybrid racing versus the Acuity is the hybrid racing actually has spots for the wiring harness to mount back up to the short shifter where the Acuity one doesn't. All right, so we're doing the install of the hybrid racing short shifter. Hi. In Cooper's Type R. And we were noticing that these did not have a locking mechanism like the Acuities. They just slide out. We were trying to figure out if that was normal or not. After some research, we found out that there is no locking tab
tabs or anything on this one for the linkages so after we put the tab in it's really not that bad i honestly don't think this is going to go anywhere or this is going to go anywhere they feel really sturdy so i don't think the locking me mechanism is going to be the end of the world when it comes to this short shifter the only plus is acuity has it as far as not having it from hybrid racings i mean yeah, it's not gonna go nowhere. Yeah, you can tug on it and it won't. It's just an extra safety thing that Acuity has. We're tugging down the four Allens for the hybrid shifter and we're torquing them down to seven Newton meters. There we go. Another big difference between the Acuity and the hybrid racing is when the Acuity, it'll just go back in vertically, whereas the hybrid racing is horizontal. Snap to the place. There you go. So with the hybrid racing, unlike the QD, there's only two options for throw. The first one's gonna reduce the throw by 5% and this bottom one's gonna reduce it by 25%. I went with the 25% just cause I wanna feel a bigger difference over OEM. So that's how it looks like mounted guys. What do you think? You like how it looks? I, I love it personally. I think that looks great. As far as really the mounting and everything goes, we got the linkages in there, we got the base in there and we got the throw adjusted. So there's not much more on hybrids except we're gonna go ahead and adjust the top portion too. When I did my Acuity one, I completely forgot about this bracket. I mounted everything back up, the center console, the AC unit, the wireless charger, everything. And at the very end, it, I had I had so much play right here in the console, so I had to take everything apart again just to mount this bracket back up. So don't be like me. Uh, I think that's pretty perfect. I think we should leave it and drive like this, honestly. I think you should leave it off, honestly. This is comfy. <laughs> Are you forgetting to connect the sensor? So this right here, guys, is your connector for your USB charger. Make sure you reconnect your, your harness for your keyless entry. You can put your clay back on for it. Just like that. Cross started right the Cooper, look at all that. Ew. Dude, I haven't had a detail in a while. Yeah, that's good enough. Huh? Now I'm bolted in and cross thread it. <laughs> there we go. I don't know. Those have been gone. Why were these? Wait, they've been gone? I don't know where they are. Bro, I thought you took them out during the install. <laughs> no, I just need new ones up there. Weight reduction. How about you just stop with the questions in general? <laughs> All right, guys, I'm recording Cooper's reassembly because our cars are exactly the same. Except I got carbon fiber. <laughs> I'm kind of worried though, because his car is put together by missing bolts and screws. So that's just weight reduction. Honestly, I'm not even gonna lie to you. You forgot to connect it first. I'm connecting it, sir. <laughs> you look like you're about to forget to connect it. No, I remembered right before you said something, honestly. Make sure you connect your, two, your cigarette lighter and make sure you connect your USB cable. There you go. Okay, so this one's here is gonna be for your how high and low you want it i'm obviously doing the lowest setting which is right here that's cool it's kind of like it gets thinner and thinner right mm -hmm. and then this side's going to be for the adjusting angle of what position you want it in and does it also have have it clocked like the acuity where you can where it tells you where to put it if you're a left hand driver and a right hand driver no but it states on the hybrid racing instructions where you should put it Actually, it does. Never mind. Oh, it has a little indention right there. Yeah. And then the the marks. I think hybrid recommended right there for right, like right-handed drivers. They don't want it over here. You want it kind of up. You were with me when I was doing the Acuity. You're doing the hybrid right now. Which one do you feel is easier? The hybrid. Feel like the hybrid's easier? Yeah. There's less uh, torque specifications, less to mess around with when it comes to torquing. There's less um, adjustments too, though, right? Yes, less adjustments. What I like a lot about the Acuity too is it clearly listed out its torque specs. Yes, that's so nice. I'm just copying Acuities for mine. So now we're gonna go ahead and start installing our center console piece. So Acuity suggests that you drive the car daily for a few hundred miles to let everything break in. For example, the bushings and all that stuff for all the moving parts in the, in the shifter. Because right now, once you first install, install the shifter, it's a little stiff. 
I recommend against making the adjustments as short as possible. It'll make locating the gears more difficult. And we kind of saw that while we were we were trying it out, right, Cooper? Yes. So most people would probably prefer the middle settings for each adjustment range to start. Don't cross thread your shift knob like you cross threaded uh, your mounting bolt. Shut up. <laughs> Do you feel it shorter than stock? Yeah, not extreme. So yeah, it guys. feels nice to run through the gears. Like I can run through these quick. First gear is just right there. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, reverse. All right, Cooper. So what, what I want you to do, test out the shifter and then get it mined right after and test it out and tell me what you think. Hybrid short shifter. How does it feel? It feels pretty good, a lot no noticeably shorter. The shift knob's a lot lower compared to stock, which is nice because I like the lower feel when I'm driving. Going in the one with the acuity. A lot shorter to throw, I noticed. They both run through the gears nice with acuity. You're gonna be searching for fifth and sixth for a little bit while until it gets broken in, but other than that, it's nice smooth transition. So Kevin and I, we both ordered our short shifters at the exact same time, maybe like two or three minutes apart. His came on Friday, mine came on Monday. So it could have been hybrid racing was really, really busy with all their Black Friday sales and took a little bit longer to ship, but we both ordered it on the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. So the hybrid racing was $2.98 with 47 cents. Um, I forgot how much off the original pricing for the hybrid was. Hybrid's originally 420. 420. So my Acuity short shifter was regular price 479. Black Friday was 52.69 off with free shipping, and I ended up paying 426.31. As far as pricing goes, hybrids was cheaper by a lot. <laughs> Build quality though, they're both very good. Yeah, they both have really good build qualities. As far as the install goes of the short shifter, I think the hardest parts for us were the clips, definitely the ones holding onto the center console. Cutting ourselves very bad. We each have a lot of cuts and stuff on our hands. I had a lot of difficulty trying to get the shift linkages on. Time-wise, I would say it's gonna take you maybe about an hour and a half, two hours. For us, it took longer because we're recording. Usually if you're not recording, you're just knocking out on your own. It's gonna be about an hour and a half, two hours at most.